Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, September 28th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. Today's epistle reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 6 through 15. Brethren, it is the God who said, Let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are inflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he who wrote, I believed, and so I spoke, we too believe, and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 23. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came forth from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples, and he said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. Today in the Orthodox Church, we remember the Venerable Keratin, the confessor. He was an abbot in the region of Palestine. Keratin, the confessor, was born at Iconium in the province of Laosinia and suffered there during a persecution against the Christians in the reign of Emperor Aurelian, who ruled from 270 to 275. The example of the holy protomartyr Tekla, who we remembered this past week, who was also a native of his city, encouraged him to confess Christ since he had a great devotion to her. St. Caraton bravely denounced the pagan gods and staunchly confessed faith in the one true God, Christ the Savior. The holy confessor underwent fierce tortures, but by God's providence, he survived. The persecution ended after Aurelian's death in 275. St. Caraton was among the many Christians who were released from prison, and he resolved to dedicate his entire life to the service of the Lord. Although he escaped death, he grieved because he had not received the crown of martyrdom. After arriving at Jerusalem on a pilgrimage to the holy places, he fell into the hands of thieves. They tied him up and threw him in a cave, intending to kill him later. After they left to find people to rob, the saint prayed fervently to God, expecting to be put to death. He did not ask God to deliver him, but instead he entreated him to do with him as he wished. At this time, a snake crawled into the cave and began to drink wine from a vessel sitting there. Later, it vomited forth its deadly venom, poisoning the wine. When they returned to the cave, the evil man drank the poisoned wine and they all perished. Thus, their wicked lives came to a fitting end. St. Caraton gave thanks to God, and then he gave away the gold which the malefactors had stolen, distributing it to the poor, to the churches, and to the monasteries. He began his ascetic struggles in the place of his miraculous rescue, and there he built a church. 
In time, a monastery was established, the renowned Theron Lavra in Palestine. St. Caraton's fame drew many disciples to him. He governed them with parental affection, and he elevated them to the highest degrees of virtue. St. Caraton compiled a strict rule for his monastery. Yearning for solitude, the monk withdrew further into the desert in order to avoid the praise of men. But he never rejected anyone who sought his spiritual guidance. He founded two more monasteries, the Jericho, called the Monastery of Keraton, and the Sukha, which was called the Old Ravra. He also brought many Jews and pagans to the Christian faith. At the end of his life, St. Keraton struggled in a cave atop a hill near the Sukha Monastery, but he did not cease to provide govern guidance for all three of the monasteries which he had founded. He fell asleep in the Lord peacefully at the advanced age on September 28th, the year 350. According to tradition, St. Keraton compiled the office of the monastic tonsure. St. Keraton was buried at the Ferran Monastery in accordance with his last wishes. His grace-filled relics were enshrined in the church that, he had been, that had been built on the site of the robber's cave. Through the intercessions of St. Keraton, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day. God bless you and keep you, and God willing, we will see you tomorrow.